manipulators will strategically try to divert you away from your everyday routine. And they do this because they're trying to set you up for a disaster. They're trying to set you up to cause some sort of harm to you, either emotional, physical, or financial. People who are all over you, giving you advice, telling you what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing and where you should shop, well, a lot of times they're not doing that because they're trying to help a girlfriend out. They're doing it because they want to cause problems for you. Sadistic narcissists love to set you up for failure or for a major life disaster. And they do it on purpose, strategically. It's calculated. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Narcissists will get up in your business. That's one way to know you're dealing with a toxic person because they are up in your grill asking you a lot of personal questions. And they're doing it because they're mining for information. They're looking for an opportunity to inject some self-doubt into whatever it is you're doing in your life. So let's say you have a flat tire and you are talking to your coworker, Tina, and you mention, oh, after work today, I have to go have my tire replaced. And she'll ask, well, where are you going to do that? And you'll say, oh, I'm going to Bob's mechanic shop. I've been going there for 15 years. They're fabulous and they're so fast. You don't even need an appointment. You just pull up and say, I need this done or I need a new tire and they just take care of it. That's why I love going there. Well, then Tina will act very concerned and she'll ask, well, how much do you pay for that? And which brand of tire do you get? And blah, 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 blah. And the questions will just start coming. Well, a lot of targets will think, wow, my coworker Tina is being so thoughtful. She's really concerned about making sure that I am not being taken advantage of. That's why she's asking me all these questions about having my tire replaced. At the end of the conversation, she will have injected a lot of self-doubt into your choice to patron Bob's Mechanic Shop. And not only that, but then she will convince you that you need to go elsewhere because you're going to get a better deal and you're going to get a better quality tire for your car, blah, blah, blah. This is what sadistic narcissists do. They set you up. So let's say she has convinced me to go to this other location. Well, it'll end up that the other location is across town and I'm driving there in rush hour traffic and it, it takes me two hours to get there. And then I get there and I find out that they can't replace the tire, that I need to leave my car there and that it will be seven days before they'll have a new tire on my car. And they're charging four times as much as Bob's mechanic shop. So this is what they do. They get up all in your business and find out what your lifestyle is like and they'll start dissecting it and they'll start choosing parts of your lifestyle, parts of your everyday schedule, your everyday practices and they'll find openings with different parts of your life and they will try to convince you that you need to change what you're doing. And the strategy is they get you to divert that messed up. The strategy is that they divert you away from your norm, from your regular routine. They get you to change what you're doing or what you have been doing. And in this process, they are not helping you. It's the opposite. They are trying to sabotage your life and parts of your life. 
any way they can. And a lot of times it's something as simple as having your tire changed and them sending you off, convincing you to go to another place to get ripped off and to waste your time. Well, at the end, let's say the next day, it's noisy outside. Um, let's say the next day you go back to work and you explain to Tina, and Tina, you'll say, you know, it took me two hours to drive to their place. It was rush hour and they couldn't even change the tire. They said it would be seven days. Well, you can't really scold Tina or say, Tina, that what, what, what was up with that? Because then you sound like you're not grateful. You sound like you're paranoid that you're accusing her of trying to set you up. And that is why it's very difficult to explain to outsiders what narcissistic abuse is and how it happens because it's very subtle it's not obvious it's only obvious when we track the patterns over a period of time that is when we can at least present more than one example of the car. Unfortunately, usually by the time we have six or seven examples of being emotionally manipulated by the narcissist, by, by the time that happens, well, they've caused a lot of chaos in our life. And a lot of people will say, well, it was your fault for not just going to Bob's mechanic shop. You, you know, take personal responsibility. That was your choice not to go there. Absolutely. I agree. It is so true that if someone says don't eat at Susan's Deli, go to Tom's Deli, and you do, and you have a bad meal, well, that's you can't really blame that on anyone. But the point I'm making is that it is not an innocent mistake. It is not just a subjective preference. Uh, uh, over mechanics. It is clearly a setup. Clearly. This type of abuse causes a lot of psychological damage with targets because at the end of the cycle of abuse, the target looks around and sees all of these huge life blunders. Everyone is saying, oh, look at you, you caused all this trouble for yourself by driving to this new location to get a new tire. It's very frustrating because targets are left in chaos often, often chaos. And it doesn't just have to be a romantic partner. Just a casual friend, a casual narcissistic friend can do a lot of damage, a lot by convincing the target to change their everyday patterns. And this is the red flag to look out for. One is be suspicious of people who are all up in your business. No one needs to know about where you have your tire changed and who your eye doctor is and who your dentist is and where you grocery shop and where you do your dry cleaning and which pharmacy you use. Those are all personal preferences and people can offer suggestions and often people do. Often people will say, oh, don't go to Sue's Deli. Tom's Deli is much better. Of course, everyone is going to suggest places and restaurants and services that they prefer, but the difference is, is that if the person finds out that you had a bad experience at Tom's Deli, then they often will be hesitant about recommending other places because they remember that you had a bad experience with that. Someone who has high empathy will respect your privacy. They'll respect your personal preferences. They're not going to be all over you, constantly drilling you about what you do and how you do it, how you live your life. Instead, they're going to constantly try to divert you. They're going to try to get you to deviate from your normal lifestyle routines. And after a while, Every time they are helping you 
it will end in a disaster. It will end in a major failure. It will end in you losing out on your time, your emotional energy, your money, something like that. Eventually, you will see the pattern. Just think back into your past and think about even casual friendships or romantic relationships or family members who are always all up in your business, giving you advice and instructing you on how to improve your life and to save money and save time, etc. But every time you took their advice or you accepted their help, it ended in a major disaster. As always, stay strong and get toxic manipulators out of your life.